I'm Veena Srinivasan. I am the executive director of Well Labs. Defining water security effectively is harder than one might think. Um, if we speak to the and, and look at how uh, water security is currently being implemented on the ground in practice by speaking to development practitioners, what we find is the vast majority of development pra practitioners are looking at or measuring water security by looking at the difference that their programs have made. So they look at the before and the after and most uh, typically what they measure is they measure outputs. That means they measure the, the amount of water storage that they've created or the amount of water that they've saved. So this difference is often called water potential. And it's very useful on one hand, but on the other hand, it's very intervention specific. So you're basically asking this metric with respect to the program that was implemented. Um, the problem is that often the intervention organizations are not the only people that are actually acting on that landscape. Often water security in a landscape can get worse despite implementation of these programs for a variety of exogenous reasons. So it could be that somebody built a dam upstream and that caused less water coming into the village altogether. It could be that somebody has started growing very water intensive crops. So despite uh, harvesting more rain, the water is all getting used up. It could be that a new industry came up and has now started polluting some, key, some important water bodies that are now no longer available. So there's a variety of other things that could be happening in a landscape which could render the landscape less water secure. So if you don't want to only look at water security in terms of interventions, what we really want is to be able to track the state of water security over time in a landscape and do so robustly and in a way that's comparable uh, across regions in a diverse country like India. What will this take? It's hard because it's harder than say other development sectors like health and education where I would say tracking improvement over time is somewhat linear. You can keep improving life expectancy, reducing morbidity, improving nutritional status of a, of a population endlessly without worrying about if I'm intervening and making it better in this village, am I making it worse in others? In fact, education and health tend to have what we call positive ex externalities. If you benefit some, everybody benefits. Unlike that, in the case of water, you often run into zero-sum games. It's only raining so much in a watershed. So if some people have more, often it means other people have less because there's only a certain amount of water that's available. Um, the second complexity that we face in water in trying to define water security is that there is an inherent tension between water for human use and water that's left in the aquifer and river for environmental purposes and ecosystem services. So the more humans use water, the greater is human well-being but there's less that's available for uh, rivers and ecosystems. Now, if we defined water only in terms of the water in the aquifer or the flow in the river, uh, the best way to, to achieve those would be to eliminate all humans in the landscape. And that's obviously not possible. So we really need to come up with a water security indicator that's multidimensional. It's saying, how do we improve the lives and livelihoods and health of humans? How do we do so without compromising the environment and without compromising what's left for future generations. And this is the challenge that we that we face. So basically water security requires better metrics that track the state of the watershed and water availability for humans and the environment in a robust way over time.